In this video, we'll use rows to create a simple Bitcoin portfolio tracker. The tracker will have an area where we can record our Bitcoin purchases, and it'll automatically calculate our averages, then return our profit loss in real time. The main tool we'll be using in this project is Rose. Rose is a spreadsheet with built in integrations. We'll be using Rows Free Plan. However, if you exceed the limits defined on their pricing page, you'll need to upgrade your plan. Also, we'll be using Alpha Vantage to access the data on Bitcoin. The Alpha Vantage integration is built into Rows. It makes the whole process slick. For convenience, I've timestamped the video in the description. First, you must create an account at rose.com. Once you've created your Rose account and logged in, click Create a new spreadsheet. Let's title the spreadsheet as follows Bitcoin Portfolio. Let's title the page as Tracker. And let's create three tables, titling them as follows. First, we want purchases. Then we'll want to create another table and we'll want to name that averages. And below that, we'll want to create another table and we'll want to name that profit slash loss. Now, let's insert the headers for each table. Let's start with the purchases table. In column A, I want date. In column B, I want the dollar sign, then a forward slash and BTC. In column C, amount. And in column D, I want cost. And I'll just make all of those bold. Now let's move on to the averages table. The headers for this table should be as follows. We want the dollar sign, then forward slash BTC. And in brackets, we want to write average. Next to that, I want amount. And in brackets, I want to write total. And in column C, I want to write cost. And then in brackets, I want to write total. And I'm just going to highlight these two as I did with the previous table and expand the columns so we can see the text in full. And let's do the profit loss table too. So the headers for this table will be as follows. In column A, we want search. In column B, we want the dollar sign, then forward slash BTC. Then we want value in column C, profit loss in column D. Great. Now let me just make these headers bold, except for search. And once that's done, we can move on to building out each table. In the purchases table in cell A2, I want to format that as follows. So let's go to more formatting options. And then I want to format it as date and time date. That's where we're going to insert the date of each Bitcoin purchase. Now let's enter some dummy purchases into the table. Date 2020 10 or 1. Let's set the amount to 10 7 4 1 5 8 and the amount to 0 0.5. Below that, let's enter another purchase. So 2020 11 or 1. We'll set the Bitcoin dollar price amount to 13. 7, 30, 20, and the amount again to 0 0.5. And let's add another, and we'll set that date to 2020, 12, 01, and the BTC purchase amount to 18, 980, 98, and again the amount to 0 0.5. The cost column will represent how much we paid for the amount. We can use a simple formula to represent that. And that will be equals C2 
times B2. And then we can simply press enter. And then we can drag that down to make it apply to the other rows too. And I want to ensure that columns B, C, and D are formatted as numbers. So if we go to the more formatting options, I want to make sure that they're formatted as numbers with commas. Also, we can increase or decrease the decimal places for our data. Now, I want to make sure that it's set to two decimal places. And as we can see, that's what's happened. Now, let's make sure that applies to the other rows too. And as we said, we want to make sure that it's formatted as number with commas and that it's set to two decimal places. And as we can see, that now applies. Let's now move on to the averages table. In column A, I want to calculate the average purchase price of my Bitcoin. Let me enter the formula we must use, then I'll explain how it works. Equals average, then I'm going to open a pair of brackets, and then I'm going to enter purchases, which is referencing the purchases table. Outside that, I'm going to put a exclamation mark, then B2, colon, B4, and I'll make sure that that formula is closed with the brackets, and then press enter. So let me explain what we're doing with this formula. So we're starting and we're declaring it with average, because we want to return the average value. Then within the brackets, we define the data that we want to assess. So we reference the purchases table, then get the total of the data in the cells between B2 and B4. That returns our figure. In column B, I want to calculate the entirety of our Bitcoin holdings. Let me enter the formula we must use again, then I'll explain how it works just as I did. So to start with in this cell, we're going to enter equals sum, and then we're going to open up a pair of brackets, and as before, we're going to reference the purchases table. And as before, we enter the exclamation mark before we reference the cells that we want to draw data down from in the purchases table. And once we've done that, we'll close the formula and press enter. So again, we're starting off the formula with what we want to do to the data. Before we started it off with average, this time we started with sum. And then within the brackets, we define the data that we want to assess. So again, we referenced the purchases table. Then we get the total of the data between the cells C2 and C4. That then returns our figure. Now, in column C, I want to calculate the figure of our total investment in Bitcoin. Let me enter the formula we must use, then I'll explain how it works. It's going to be similar to the formula that we just used in column B. So it starts with equal sum, then we open up a pair of brackets, and then reference the purchases table, and then we draw down the data that we want to assess. And in this case, it sells D2 to D4. Then we close the formula and press enter. So with this formula, we started off by declaring sum as we did before. Then within the brackets, we define the data that we want to assess. So we reference the purchases table, then get the total of the data between cells D2 and D4. Again, that returns our figure. And I want to ensure that the columns A, B, and C are formatted as numbers with commas. Also, we can increase or decrease the decimal places. And as before, what I want to do is make sure that it's set to two decimal places. Let's now move on to the profit loss table. In column A, in the profit loss table, 
will want to query Alpha Vantage for the price of Bitcoin. So to begin, click into cell A2, then open up the functions menu. Here we can search for Alpha Vantage. As you'll see, there are many queries we can run, but the query we're looking for is FX Alpha Vantage. So once you've clicked on that, you'll want to copy the formula, then go into cell A2 in the profit loss table and paste that in. Let's define the parameters for the function. In the formula, you'll want to enter BTC USD and close the formula. And if we press enter, you'll see that it has gathered data. Now, if we click on the button to open the menu of the gathered data, then click all data and expand all, we can see the gathered data. We want the exchange rate data from this set of data. That piece of data represents the price of Bitcoin to the US dollar. Click copy on the exchange rate, then go into cell B2 and paste that in. Great, you've successfully passed data as easily as that. Now, in column C, I want to calculate the value of my holdings in real time. Let me enter the formula we must use, then I'll explain how it works. Equals averages B2 times B2. Great, now let me explain how this formula is working. So what we do here is that we start by drawing cell data from cell B2 in the averages table, the total amount of Bitcoin we own. Then we multiply that cell by cell B2 in the profit loss table. That gives us the value of our portfolio in real time. Now in column D, I want to calculate how much of a profit or loss we've made in real time. So let me enter the formula that we must use again, and then I'll explain how it works. So here I'm going to enter equals C2 takeaway averages C2 and press enter. So what we do here is that we start by referencing column C in the profit loss table, in particular cell C2, which is the value of our holdings. Then we subtract that from column C, again the cell C2, in the averages table. That gives the profit or loss of our portfolio in real time. So there we have a Bitcoin portfolio tracker in rows. Rows is an excellent tool and its capabilities far extend what you've seen in this tutorial. However, I hope that this tutorial gets you excited enough to play around with Rose. This project is now complete, I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this no code project, please give this video a like. And if you want to be notified of the latest projects that I publish every week, please subscribe. I'll see you in another no code project.